And good morning on a raining day, on a raining Sunday. And the first Sunday as well, of October, isn't it? Amazing, amazing. It was scary. No, well, not really scary. A few days ago, um, I, was, I got an email for a Christmas meal. I'm like, really? Christmas already? Before you know it now, the, the, the jingle will start ringing and we'll be in a Christmas mood as well. But you know what I like? Every Sunday we come to celebrate. Celebrate the love of Jesus. Celebrate the faithfulness of our God. Whether it is sunny, whether it is rainy, whether it is cold, whatever season, we have a God that we can worship, we can praise, and we can adore. And that's why we've come this morning, to just have that amazing time of worship. And so today, we have, we, uh, Duncan is continuing uh, the book of Ruth. Last week, he started uh, Ruth 1, so today he's looking at Ruth 2. So if we missed last Sunday, please... Uh, you might want to watch that as well after the, the service, obviously. Also, uh, the kids will be going out after the second song, I believe. Uh, so, also, we've got youths today. Okay, so some of our youths have moved to, some of the kids have moved to the youth section. So, they'll be this, today will be their first time at youth. So, uh, they're looking forward to that, I believe. Uh, I think Amaru is doing that. Kate is doing kids. And you this morning, I believe. Kids work. Good, fantastic. And we've got a lovely band always there to serve us. And Johnny all, also there to serve us and to, uh, technical as well. So, yeah. Um, why don't we stand? I'm just going to read the place for us in, in, in the gospel. And if today's the first time of coming, you are warmly welcome as well. We, we love uh, if today you're visiting. It's so good to see you. We'll talk more about what we do and what we offer later on. So, and also, please, if you, I know it's, it's, it's cold, so please, the, the toilet is at the right there. So, you just make your way today if you need the toilet as well. So, I just want to read Psalm 122. I love this Psalm so much because it just talks about what we come to do in the house of the Lord. And it says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand in your gates, O Jerusalem. So, it's so, so, so great to come into God's presence. See, I was glad when they said unto me. So, Lord, today we have come into your presence. We are so glad that we are here this morning. And we ask that, Lord, you will have a wonderful time in your presence. Please, if you have any prophetic picture, prophetic word, if you have a prayer, please, you can just shout out where you are. If you want to come forward and share with God's people, that's absolutely fine as well. You can just grab myself a donkey and talk about it. We'll be happy to uh, listen and, and see how it fits into the service. So, uh, we'll pass it to Justin to lead us in the time of worship. God bless you. Good morning, church. Are you ready to worship? I know it's a bit cold. Some of you are holding your hands. I want us to do something different today. Can we, you know, the Bible, it's not me saying, it's the Bible that says, come before the Lord with joyful songs, with clapping and dancing. I'm not going to tell you to dance, but we can clap, right? So can we clap now, just to warm things up? Just, just clap in my sing. Let's sing together. Come, let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what a Savior has done. See how His love overcome. He has done great things. He has done great things. O oh, hero of heaven, you've conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. O oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. O oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. O oh, God, you have done great things. You 
You've been faithful to every storm You've been faithful forevermore You have done great things And I know you will do it again For your promise is yes and amen You will do great things You will do great things O oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave you free every captive and break every chain, O oh God. You have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. O oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, O oh God. You have done great things. You've been faithful. You've been faithful to every storm You've been faithful forevermore You have done great things And I know you will do it again For your promise is yes and amen You will do great things God, you do great things O oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave You free every captive and break every chain O oh, God, you have done great things We dance in your freedom, awake and alive O oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high O oh, God, you have done great things Hallelujah Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things, you've done great things. O oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave, you free every captive and break every chain, O oh, God. You have done great things, we dance in your freedom, awake and alive. O oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, O oh God, you have done great things. Yes, Lord, you're mighty, Lord. You're great, God. You are an awesome God, Lord. And you are here in our midst through your Holy Spirit, Lord. We want to delight in your presence this morning. Blessed be your name, Lord. Where the streams of abundant flow Blessed be your name Blessed be your name When I found in the desert place The walk through the wilderness Blessed be your name 
Every blessing you put out don't turn back to be your name when the sun's shining down on me when the world's all as it should be blessed be your name blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering for there's pain in the offering blessed be your name Every blessing you put out on turn back to pain. When the darkness closes in on, still I will sing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. As I was uh, preparing to lead worship, I was uh, reminded of a psalm which says, Bless the name of the Lord. And I, I started to think, how can you bless the Lord who has created everything? And I started questioning, what, do, uh, what does it mean to bless the Lord? How can I bless the Lord who has blessed me? And, and the thought came to me, I can bless the Lord with my voice, with all that I have. I can exalt His name and bless Him. In every situation, I can lift His name up and bless Him. Whatever I'm going through, I can bless the Lord. In happy times, I can bless. In times of difficulty, I can bless the Lord. And as we sing this song, Let's have those moments in our mind and bless Him. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my 
my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship His holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning It's time to sing your song again Whatever may pass And whatever lies before me Let me be singing when the evening Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. Your rich in love and your slow to anger Your name is great and your heart is kind For all your goodness I will keep on singing Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh, oh my soul, I worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. On that day when my strength is failing The end draws near and my time has come Still my soul will sing your praise unending Ten thousand years and then forever Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship Your holy Ephesians chapter 1, which speaks of blessing God for the numerous ways he has blessed us. Just some of those thousand reasons to sing the praises of God contained in this chapter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly places with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us, in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, 
things in heaven and on earth. Mm. In him we have an, obtained an inheritance, mm. having been predestined according to the purpose of him, mm. who works all things according to the counsel of his will, mm. so that we who were the first to hope in Christ mm. might be to the praise of his glory. Mm. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, believed in him, mm. were sealed with the mm. promised Holy Spirit, mm. who is the guarantee of our inheritance, until we acquire possession of it, to the praise of his glorious grace. Heavenly Father, we thank you that in Christ we have every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for grace. We thank you for love. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who is in our midst this morning, Lord God. We want to sing your praises. We want to bless your holy name. We want to declare your goodness in our lives, because you have done awesome things for us. And even if we were to praise your name, from now until the end of the day, we would never run out of things to bless you for what you've done. So we praise you and glorify you this morning. We bless your wonderful, wonderful name. Amen. Why don't we respond to, to that um, verses that Duncan has brought to us? Why we just play some instrumental? Um, the, the song says, bless the Lord, O my soul. 10,000 reasons for my heart to find. I want us just to express our heart to God this morning. What, what reasons do you have this morning to bless the Lord? Why don't we just express ourselves to God this morning? You know, let him hear your voices this morning. As Duncan has shared those amazing scriptures with us. Blessed be the Lord who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Let him hear your voices this morning. Let's lift up our voices this morning and just bless his holy name. Yes, Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Let your soul... Bless his name this morning. What reasons do you have this morning to bless his name? Oh, thank you. He's the one that forgave my sins. <laughs> He's the one that brought me from the miry clay. Oh, I have a reason this morning to, to just bless you, oh God. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul. All oh, that is within me, bless his holy name. He said, bless the Lord, O oh my son, forget not all, all he's done for me. Oh, Lord, we just express our love for you this morning.
At this point, we'll just take communion. Um, the song says, here we are. How did we get here? Because he paid the price for us. There will be no church if there was no Christ. The reason why we have a church is because there was a Christ. It was the Christ who died for us. And so when we, com when we do communion, we remember what he did. The reason why we are here today is because of the price he paid. So when we remember and we take communion, we remember the sacrifices that he did for us. So we're going to spend some time taking the communion. And I will just, I'll just ask uh, Martin and Ellen if you can just go over there to help with, uh, and Abe and Shelley as well, if you can just help on this other side. So the way we do it, please feel free when you're ready, just, just grab the cup and the bread and then we could just have a time of, of prayer. And just grab somebody to pray with, or you know, for the next few minutes, if you wanna pray on your own, 
that's fine. If you want to just pray with somebody, that's fine. If you want to come forward to, to get prayers as well. Whatever you feel most comfortable to do, please, let's spend the next few minutes just expressing our hearts to God in thanksgiving. So you may be proceed and take the bread and the wine now. God bless you. Let's just stay in this place of worship. Uh, let's just stay in this place of remembrance of what Jesus did on the cross for us. Um, we just welcome you, Holy Spirit. Come, fill our hearts and minds with your presence. Reveal more of your love to us, Father God. May we be made more into your image every single day. And I just ask, Father God, if, if anyone needs healing, if anyone needs uh, a fresh reminder of your love and your gentle touch would you just just pour your spirit into their hearts and minds now just reveal how much you love every single person in, in this world because you call all people to salvation father god and i just ask holy spirit come in your gentleness in your love in your grace just just bring that peace that only comes from you so Holy Spirit come, we welcome you, we welcome your presence. And I just have a sense now that for some people they're feeling dry, they're feeling tired um, and I just, I just felt the Lord say come to me, come to me afresh, come and tell me your, your, your problems, your burdens, your worries, just lay them before my feet, allow me to work my presence and my love into, into your life allow me to take over and i just felt for some people it's swap the yokes over give allow the father to take your yoke and you take his because he will take our burdens from us he will take that pressure away from us and he will equip us to be the sons and daughters that he has called us to be mm. amen
standing beneath your wing I am resting in your shelter Your great faithfulness has been my shield And it makes me want to sing Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be the name of the Lord I will bless your holy name For all my days Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be the name of the Lord I will bless your holy name For all my days Blessed be the Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yeah, I'll quickly invite Martin. He's got a, a beautiful picture for us this morning. We're going to pray into that. So, Martin. Yeah, I thought I'd share with something that my uh, my son came to tell me this morning. I, I didn't quite know how it fitted in. He, he came to me and said he'd had a bad dream, and um, uh, he said, he, and, and, uh, and I'm praying about it this morning, and, I, and I, I'll just uh, just lead into that. That um, he had a, he had a picture of me f in a cornfield, and um, uh, I was in the cornfield, and then I fell down a drain, and I was lost in a drain trying to find my way home. And uh, I didn't quite understand how that sorted uh, fitted in, but immediately prayed with him, saying that God is God has got a relationship with us, and He will rescue us and hold us, and and wherever we are, He'll find uh, find us, um, bring us home. And this morning, just praying, everything's been about relationships, about how God, uh, how how, uh, and and on my heart that, that the Lord is seeking a relationship. And he knows every hair on our head. He knew us in our mother's womb. You know, he, he's he's wanting that relationship. He's not a God that stands out, uh, stands away from us. And and he knows where we are in the cornfield. He knows whether we're enjoying it, whether whether it was good, and now we've fallen down the pit because it it, it, it doesn't. It's overwhelmed us. He knows exactly where you are in that cornfield, no matter how big or how small it is. Uh, and he knows he knows um, whether you're enjoying it or not, and, and all the bits and pieces. He knows he knows every bit of you while you're there. And w and when, you, when even if you feel like you've fallen out of the cornfield, all the goodness and the sunshine in the cornfield, and you've fallen into the drain, and you can't see a way out, and you have nowhere to go. He knows exactly where you are, exactly the way out, and and he wants you to have that relationship and that trust in him to know that no matter where you are in that place, he will pull you out, he will guide you home, and there is a route home, and, uh, and you do not need to despair. Thank you very much for that. Um, and I'll just read Psalm 40, verse 2. Uh, I think it speaks into that. It says, It drew me from the pit of clay out of the miry bog and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. So whatever or wherever you are today, God can lift you from the miry clay, from that pit. And verse 3 said, they put a new song in my mouth. So when we go to storm, God always brings a song at the end of it. So be encouraged this morning with this word. Thank you guys so much for serving us this morning and just take your seat. Uh, before Duncan comes, I'll just mention a few notices. Uh, I think on Friday, the ladies had a wonderful time at, um, where was it? Yeah, retail lounge. Was it good? Very good. Was it good? Very good, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. And the men are also pay. You know, we 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 can't be left out. So we we've decided that um, on the when is it again? Thursday, six. On the is it? six, is it? Yeah, Thursday on Thursday on the sixth.
Maybe I should just go and sit down. <laughs> she didn't say too much. Oh, big Bible as well. All right, so um, on the 6th of October, uh, the men will be having their, um, we're having their dinner at uh, the Lord Arthur Lee, 7, is it 7 p.m.? 7 p.m.? Yeah. yeah, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. So please, I think we had one last month, it was really good, and we look forward to having another one this uh, in October. And I think most of the notes, what's going on today? Let me just leave my Bible here. Thanks, Damien. Somebody's looking at me like, what's going on today? Everything just falling off. I did the good things. I'm not the one falling off. It's just a book falling off. If it was me, that would be a bit more like, what's going on? So thankfully, everything is fine. Uh, I just want to sign posters to the website as well. Uh, the website has all the information that uh, we announce every Sunday. Also, Duncan in his, um, it does uh, a weekly checkup as well. Every Tuesday or Wednesday brings all the notices. So we have a wonderful website that everything we do in church is there. And we, we often don't sign post people there. So today I just want to just, you know, sign posters to the website today because everything we have. For example, on Tuesday we have in the prayer meeting. Who knows? We have a new venue. Where's the venue? Who knows? Wellington Village. So, uh, so on Tuesday, we're having our pr the first prayer meeting at Wellington Village. We used to have it at Ashcroft Center, but now we're moving to uh, Wellington Village. So on Tuesday, we're having that from half seven to nine. On Thursday, we have the men's breakfast. And what's going on then Sunday as well? Who knows? Lunch. Yeah, absolutely. So after service, there's lunch. Or <coughs> after service so we we uh next sunday we'll be having lunch so please don't rush away after service please stay back uh we're gonna have a time to just you know get to know each other have something nice to hopefully the weather will be good it's just too fast <laughs> it's just going through very quickly anyway also uh next week we'll continue with live groups as well so we have live groups we have tuesdays wednesdays and thursdays if you have not signed up to any please do well to sign up and if this Today is the first time as well of coming. We, we really love to have you here. We thank you so much for coming. And we hope you have a wonderful time in God's presence today as well. So everything is on the website. Please do well to visit all the sermons. Like last week, you know, Duncan preached from Route 1. If you've missed it, you can go there and go sermon. Look at that. And it's there. So you can enjoy the sermon. So if you miss anything, you know, just go there. It's a one-stop shop for everything. Although there's no merchandise to, to shop there. So you won't buy anything there, but... Everything you need there is, is over there, and you'll be able to carry on. All right, so can you just speak to someone next to you? Say hi to somebody Why Duncan comes and gets himself ready, and hopefully this thing won't fall off from him. <laughs> okay. Well, good morning. Lovely to see you. And if this is your first time, can I just add my warm welcome to Dyer's welcome. My name's Duncan, and it's wonderful to have you with us. I'm going to pray as we come to read from the, uh, God's word and from the book of Ruth. So let's pray together. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. Thank you that you are a God who has chosen to reveal yourself to us. And as we come and read from your word, we are hearing from you. And that's my prayer, Lord God, that you would speak to us this morning you would move our hearts to worship Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. You would speak clearly in encouragement and challenge. And Lord, we just pray that you would be glorified um, in everything that I say and every thought that we have during this time. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you know God's favour 
in your life? How can we receive favour and blessing from God in our lives? And when times get really, really tough, where is God's favour upon our lives? That's the question that Naomi is asking at the end of Ruth chapter 1 and the beginning of Ruth chapter 2. There's been famine, if you remember last week, there's been famine in the land of Israel. So Naomi and her family leave and go to Moab. And in Moab, Naomi's husband and her sons die. And so she returns to Bethlehem with Ruth and she says this, The Lord has dealt very bitterly with me. I went away full and the Lord has brought me back empty. The Lord Almighty has brought calamity upon me. And so she's asking this question, where is God's favour in my life? And the question for this morning as we read Ruth chapter 2 is, how will God treat Ruth and Naomi now they have returned to Bethlehem? How will he begin to show favour in an amazing way in their lives? Let's find out the answer to that question. I'm going to read from Ruth chapter 2. I'm going to read the whole chapter, so verses 1 to 23. Ruth 2, 1 to 23, and the words are already on the screen behind me. Thanks, Johnny. Now, Naomi had a relative of her husband's, a worthy man of the clan of Elimelech, whose name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, let me go to the field and glean among the ears of grain after him in whose sight I shall find favour. And she said to her, go, my daughter. So Ruth set out and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And she happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the clan of Elimelech. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem. And he said to the reapers, the Lord be with you. And they answered, the Lord bless you. Then Boaz said to his young man, who was in charge of the reapers, whose young woman is this? And the servant who was in charge of the reapers answered, she is the young Moabite woman who has come back with Naomi from the country of Moab. She said, please let me glean and gather among the sheaves after the reapers. So she came and she has continued from early morning until now, except for a short rest. Then Boaz said to Ruth, now listen, my daughter. Do not go to glean in another field or leave this one, but keep close to my young women. Let your eyes be on the field they are reaping and go after them. Have I not charged the young men not to touch you? And when you are thirsty, go to the vessels and drink what the young men have drawn. Then she fell on her face, bowing to the ground and said, Why have I found favour in your eyes that you should take notice of me since I am a foreigner? But Boaz answered her, All that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband has been fully told to me, and how you left your father and mother and your native land and came to a people that you did not know before. The Lord repay you for what you have done, and a full reward be given you by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. Then she said, I have found favour in your eyes, my Lord, for you have comforted me and spoken kindly to your servant, though I am not one of your servants. And at mealtime, Boaz said to her, come here and eat some bread and dip your morsel in the wine. So she sat beside the reapers and he passed to her roasted grain and she ate until she was satisfied and she had some left over. When she rose to glean, Boaz instructed his young men saying, let her glean even among the sheaves and do not reproach her. And also pull out some more from the bundles for her and leave it for her to glean and do not rebuke her. So she gleaned in the field until evening. Then she beat out what she had gleaned and it was about an ether of barley. And she took it up and went into the city. Her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned. She also brought out and gave her what food she had left over after being satisfied. And her mother-in-law said to her, where did you glean today and where have you worked? Blessed be the man who took notice of you. So she told her mother-in-law with whom she had worked and said, the man's name with whom I work today is Boaz. And Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, may he be blessed by the Lord, whose kindness has not forsaken the living or the dead. And Naomi also said to her, the man is a close relative of ours, one of our redeemers. And Ruth the Moabite said, besides, he said to me, you shall keep close by my young men until they have finished all my harvest. And Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, it is good, my daughter, that you go out with his young women, lest in another field you be assaulted. 
So she kept close to the young women of Boaz, gleaning until the end of the barley and wheat harvests, and she lived with her mother-in-law. Chapter 2 is the beginning of the turnaround for Ruth and Naomi in Bethlehem. This is the moment God's grace really moves mightily in their lives. And the first thing I want to do this morning from that passage is reflect on the character of Ruth. Notice in verse 2, it's not Naomi who says to Ruth, hey, you go, you go and bring me some grain. No, it's Ruth who volunteers. She says to Naomi, let me go to the field and glean. We're hungry, we need food. Let me go and find someone who will grant me favour. There's a kindness and care in Ruth. Ruth hasn't just said, yes, I will go with you, Naomi, back to Bethlehem. No, now she's saying, now I will provide for us. Now I'll find a way for us to have enough to eat. And so she says, let me go to the field and glean. Notice in verse 7 that Ruth is an incredibly hard worker. She goes to the field, she asks permission from the workers, and then she works hard from early morning with only a short rest. It's almost as if the man he's reporting to Boaz is impressed by this young woman who has not ceased to work hard, gleaning amongst the wheat. Consider also that Ruth's not just working hard, but she's also making big sacrifices and there is a large risk involved in what she has volunteered to do. Consider the fact that she is a woman. Now, did you see in verse 9, Boaz said, I have charged the young men not to touch you. Now, why does Boaz have to say that? It's because the culture in which they are working is where there is a big risk involved in being a woman out working in the fields. Boaz has to say that to his young men because when Ruth says, I'm going to go out and glean, she's risking being assaulted in that place. It's a terrible thing to be true of the society in which they're living. But it shows that Ruth is willing to gather food and risk herself in that way in order to provide for Naomi. Now, there's a second reason why it's a big risk for Ruth to go out in the field as well. She's not only a woman, she's also a foreigner from Moab. And so she is not only open to being assaulted because she's female, but also open to being treated in a poor way, in a racist way, because she's a foreigner. So when she says, I'm going to go out to the field, she is taking a big risk big risk. Now I want to ask you a question. When was the last time you worked so hard, you took risks, you made sacrifices in order to help and to bless and to love someone else like Ruth is doing in this chapter? When was the last time you worked hard, took risks, made sacrifices in order to bless somebody else? When our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, came to this earth, this is what he said about himself. The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. Isn't that extraordinary? The Lord of the universe, by whom all things were made, through whom the whole universe is sustained, and for whom all the world exists for his glory. This is God the Son, Jesus Christ, who comes into the world not to be served, but to serve, even offering up his life upon the cross. He came as a servant to offer a service that required a huge sacrifice. So are you following Ruth's example of love and sacrifice and risk? Are you following Christ's example, following his footsteps to serve and love others? I want to encourage you to see Ruth and Jesus Christ as examples to follow. Are you sacrificially loving and serving others? Why don't you with me pray that the Lord would lay on your heart what that looks like for you in the week ahead and the month ahead. Pray for a person to help, a need that you can meet. Pray for a good work to be prepared for you to do, that you can do it with love and compassion, making sacrifices to serve others. Isn't that what it is to be the church, to, to love others and to serve one another and people outside the church in sacrificial ways, following the example of Christ, following the example of Ruth?
Now, the second thing I want us to do in this passage is to consider the example of Boaz in this chapter. And the thing I really, really love about Boaz is he's brought God into his workplace. And he's brought God into his workplace in word and deed in this chapter. Do you know when Boaz arrives in his field, he says, the Lord be with you. And his workers all respond, the Lord bless you. I wonder how many of you tomorrow morning are going to walk into work and go, the Lord be with you. And everyone in your office is going to respond, the Lord bless you. I I suspect none of us are going to have that experience tomorrow morning. And I'm not expecting you to walk into a secular environment and shout in a loud voice, the Lord be with you. But I wonder whether you are bringing words about our God, about our Lord, into the place where you work. Do we have boldness to speak things about God to the people around us? And Monday morning is actually a wonderful opportunity to say something of God. You get asked questions like this. How was your weekend? And you can answer like this. Good. At church on Sunday, we we thought about God's favour. We sung a song about God's blessing that impacted me. Just something short, something simple. I don't want you to preach a sermon. In that moment, you don't need to stand up and say, right, if you just sit and be quiet for 35 minutes, I will repeat to you everything Duncan said to me on a Sunday morning. But we should be bold to go, God is part of my life. He's a significant part of my life. And we shouldn't be afraid just to say something about God when we enter into our workplaces, wherever that is. I don't just mean if you've got a job. I mean, wherever you do work, are you bringing God into those places with your words? You know, when I worked in digital marketing, um, I'm trying to work out how much of the story to tell you. (laughs) You know, in my interview, they asked me why I had moved to the South Coast because I was moving from Watford. And I thought, what do I do? Do I tell a lie? Do I, what? I, I just went for the, the blunt truth. I said, I've moved to Fareham because um, God's asked me to start a new church in Fareham and I need a job to support me <laughs> while I do it. And the interview went, oh, that's amazing. My dad used to be a vicar. <laughs> and so suddenly, right from the start, I brought God into the conversation. Now, now, I had a great way of bringing God into the conversation. But actually, over time, as I worked in that environment, very briefly, I just share something of God and slowly the whole office kind of grew to learn that Duncan was the, the Christian. And actually, people who I sort of didn't know very well would walk from one end of the office and come and ask me to pray for things down the other end of the office. I, went, I worked there for four years and over time, like just this knowledge that I had some relationship with God and was unafraid to speak about that meant that people who I had very brief relationships with with would come and ask me questions. And so I want to encourage you to use your words at work to honour God. But for Boaz, it's not just his words. It's not just that he arrives and, and pays lip service to God in the place of his work. It's also action. Have a look at verses eight and nine and the kindness Boaz shows to Ruth. Stay in this field. Stay close to the other women who are gleaning. The men will not harm you. I will make sure that the men will not harm you. Have a look at verse 14. Come, Ruth, come and sit down with the workers and come and have dinner and have some food. And verses 15 to 16, he instructs his men to help her. Make sure she has everything that she needs. Boaz leads in a way that reflects God's kindness. He's the owner of this field. He's the business owner in a sense, but he leads in a way that reflects God's kindness. And I wonder whether the people who you work with, whether it be in a job or just in your daily life, the people around you, would they say the same about you? Would they say the same about us? That is a person who works with the kindness of God in the way they do business, in the way that they work. Again, if if you would say maybe they wouldn't say that about you, I'd encourage you to pray, Lord, give me the kindness of Christ in my workplace. I want to say something about Jesus. I want to say something about God. And I want to show that I'm in relationship with God by my kindness in my life. So whatever we do, whether we're working in an employed role or at home or we're helping others voluntarily, may our work be filled with words honouring God and deeds which show the kindness of God. So we've considered Ruth 
and Boaz so far from Ruth chapter 2. But I tell you the truth, if we read Ruth 2 and we only see Ruth and Boaz as examples to follow, if we only see practical challenges and applications in this chapter, then we've missed the point. I think that's true of every sermon, by the way. If I just stand up here and say, this is how you should live, then I'm missing the gospel, because that's not the gospel. The gospel is that we've been rescued by a loving God. And so we do preach, we we do see examples, we do see challenges, we do see applications. But in Ruth chapter 2, we also see the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, because Ruth 2 is all about favour. Did you see that word favour in verse 2? In verse 10 and in verse 13, this word favour gets repeated over and over. And I want to give you a tip. If you're ever reading the Old Testament and you're reading stories in the Old Testament, look out for words that repeat themselves because the author is deliberately trying to point you so you can understand the story. So the person who's written this chapter has repeated the word favour to point you in the direction with what the story is really about. Yes, it's about Ruth going to get some food from a field and Boaz being kind to her. But what it's really about is favour. And what this story teaches us in Ruth 2 is that the favour of God is for all who take refuge under his wings. This chapter is about favour for anyone who comes to God and takes refuge under his wings. Let's walk, let's, let me walk you through the story again. Ruth 2, Ruth says, I'm going to glean after him in whose sight I shall find favour. Now, in in verse two, Ruth doesn't know who she's talking about. She's saying, I'm just going to go and glean and I'm going to wander about the fields until I find someone who's going to show me favour. She's got faith that she's going to find someone who's going to give her favour, but she doesn't know who that is. And then in verse three, it says, she happened to come to the field belonging to Boaz. Now, isn't that a coincidence? This is a relative that she's, she's somehow wandered into the field. She happens to... Isn't that a coincidence or maybe it's God's favour directing her to the precise field where she needs to arrive. So God's favour comes in verse 3 and she ends up being blessed wonderfully in this field. Boaz comes from Bethlehem, perfect timing, and he shows her the favour she needs to get, the food that she needs. And so Ruth is stunned by the blessing of Boaz. She's like, what is going on? She says in verse 10, Why have I found favour in your eyes? Don't you know I'm a foreigner? Do you know Ruth was from Moab? And in Judges chapter 3, Israel is invaded and enslaved by Moab. So of all the places she could come from, Moab is a very, very bad place to come from. You know, this this is the equivalent of a Russian turning up in a Ukrainian field, what's going to happen in this moment? That's how, that's how worried Ruth may have been, that she's going to be persecuted, hated, treated horribly. Now, verse 11, Boaz answers, why am I showing you favour? He says in verse 11, all that you've done for your mother-in-law has been told to me. So there's a human reason why Ruth is ex- receiving this favour. Boaz says, I know that you've shown great love for your mother-in-law. And so I want to bless you. But then in verse 12, there's a deeper and more spiritual reason that she receives favour. This is what Boaz says. The Lord repay you for what you have done and a full reward be given you by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. What's Boaz saying? It's not really my favour. It's not really me who's showing you favour. It's God's favour. And why have you found favour with God? It's because you came to take shelter under the wings of God. That's why you found favour. Do you remember in chapter one, Ruth and Naomi in Moab thinking about going back to Bethlehem. And Naomi says, don't come with me, Ruth. That would be a stupid decision. I'm not going to have any more sons to be your husband. I've got no money. I've got no food. I've got nothing to offer you. Go back, Ruth. Don't come with me. And how does Ruth respond? She says, no, your God shall be my God. I will leave Moab. I will leave my people. I will leave my idols. And I will turn to Yahweh for refuge, protection and provision. That's what Ruth did in chapter one. She entrusted herself to the Lord. 
And how has God responded? In chapter 2, through Boaz, he's granted her favour. I want to ask you a very, very important question. Where do you find your security? Where do you find your comfort? Where do you find protection? Where do you find true life? Well, the answer that Ruth 2 screams at us is if you want true security, find it with Yahweh. Find it with God. Put your faith in him. Take refuge under the shadow of his wings and he will grant you favour. That's why Ruth has found favour in this story, because she's come and sought refuge with Yahweh. He's my God and I will follow him forever. Do you know, generations later, a descendant of Ruth, a man called David, David the shepherd, David the songwriter, David the one who would become the king of Israel, is hiding from Saul in a cave. King Saul wants to kill King David because he's heard that David's going to become king and he's not happy about it. And in Psalm 57, this is what David writes. Be merciful to me, O God. Be merciful to me, for in you my soul takes refuge. In the shadow of your wings I will take refuge till the storms of destruction pass by. Do you know, David, four or five times in the Psalms, uses this phrase, I will take refuge under the shadow of God's wings. It's exactly the same idea that Ruth has experienced in Ruth chapter 2. And I wonder whether this had become a family saying that had been passed down through the generations. David heard from his grandmother, when trials come, don't turn to riches for safety. Don't rely on your friends and family first. Don't knuckle down and rely on your own strength. No, when you go through suffering, when you go through trials, remember what your great grandma Ruth did. She found refuge under the wings of the Lord God Almighty. He was her help. He was her shield. He was her shelter. He was her provider. He was her sustainer. And so this has, been, David, this has been spoken to David over years and years and years. And when he comes to write these songs that the whole of Israel would sing, he chooses these phrases that he's learned through generations. Don't we have an awesome, awesome God who says, as Chris has already prophesied to us this morning, who says, come to me and I will give you rest and security under my, ring, under my wings. Isn't we just have an awesome God? Come to me, says God. Now, even further in history, generations after David, God once again showed his love and his desire to help people who were in need by sending his son, Jesus Christ. He was the son of God, the divine son of God. But humanly speaking, he was a descendant of David. And this is what Jesus said when he was on the earth in Matthew 23, verse 27. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. The city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, but you were not willing. You know, when we think of Jesus, we think of him as saviour, the one who died for us on the cross that we might be forgiven. We think of Christ as king who is mighty and powerful and defeats death, defeats evil in order that we might have eternal life. We think of Christ as the miracle worker who healed the sick and fed the hungry. But how often do we think of Christ as like a mother hen who gathers her chicks under her wings? This is, this is who Jesus is. He's like a mother hen. He gathers his children. He gathers his people, you and me, under his wings for protection. If you are willing, says Christ, I will take you under my wings and protect you forever. Not just today, not just tomorrow, not just next month, but into eternity. Come and find refuge and protection under the wings of Christ. It's an image of love, it's an image of compassion. It's an image of gentleness, our gentle saviour Jesus. It's an image of salvation and it's an image of eternal security. All who are comforted, all who find this refuge are protected wonderfully for all eternity. And, and this is what it is to become a Christian. To become a Christian is to say this, 
I needed help. I felt vulnerable. My sin, my wrongdoing condemned me. The world and its evils enticed me and they harmed me and they hurt me. And I looked for help and I found a mother hen in Christ. He died for me on the cross so that my sins were forgiven. He rose again and gave me the gift of the Holy Spirit who dwells within me so that I might have new life. He said, I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. And so I placed my faith in Christ. I trusted Christ. Like Ruth, I turned away from my old life and I took refuge under Jesus's wings. That's what it is to become a Christian, to turn and by faith in Christ, taking refuge under his wings like a mother hen. Now, Boaz says to Ruth in Ruth 2, a full reward be given you by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. Now, I wonder whether Boaz, when he said a full reward be given you, whether he was just anticipating a few crumbs around the field as she gathered wheat. I think when Boaz used the word full reward, he knew that Ruth was receiving so much more when she came to believe in Yahweh. It wasn't just the wheat that she would gather. It wasn't just the food. It was a full reward. I think Boaz has this idea of eternity in mind. And he's thinking that Ruth, by coming to shelter under the wings of Yahweh, has come to receive this huge reward. And as Christians, we have received a full reward when we've come to take refuge under the wings of Christ. Jesus promises the favour of God upon us for eternity if we've come to take shelter under his wings. He promises forgiveness of sin. He promises everlasting life. He promises a joy even in sorrow. Even when we're weeping and finding sadness, there's a joy that's deep within us because of what Christ has done. He promises a relationship with God, the creator of the universe, the one who flung stars into space. I can say I can pray to him as father this morning. I have a relationship with him. This is part of the full reward I've received. He's given us us. Jesus promises a church family, other chicks huddling together, doing life together, finding shelter under the shadow of Christ's wings. This is a refuge like no other under the wings of Christ. And so I want to encourage each and every one of you, take refuge under Christ's wings today. Trust him. Put your faith in him. And prioritise a closeness in prayer. Come to Christ and just dwell in his presence in prayer. This is one of the joys of the Christian faith. So just pray and have closeness with the Lord Jesus Christ who is sheltering us forever and ever. That's my challenge to each and every one of you, to take refuge under the wings of Christ. But I want to speak particularly to um, three groups this morning. I particularly want to speak to you if you are someone who has ruled themselves out. Ruth was a foreigner, a Moabite. Surely she would never find favour with God. And yet, in this story, that's precisely what she finds. The wonderful favour of God in her life. Maybe you've ruled yourself out from the favour of God in your life. You don't know the bad things I've done, Duncan. I'm a foreigner. I'm a stranger to Christianity. All these other people look like they belong in the room, but not me. I'm a stranger. I don't know what's I don't know what's going on. Or maybe you're thinking I'm not kind like Ruth. How could I ever find the favour of God? Well, let me tell you. It's precisely for people like you that the church exists. It's precisely for people like you that Christ died on the cross. And all of us are foreigners in a strange kind of way. None of us really know what we're doing. We come to worship God together. We place our faith in Christ and his love and salvation overwhelms us and changes us. And so if if, if you've ever ruled yourself out from God, if you've ever ruled yourself out, just as Ruth found favour, I believe that Christ's love and salvation is for you as well. Come today to him in prayer. Don't delay. Pray this prayer, Lord Jesus. I trust in you, take me under your wings. Second group of people, I want to particularly bring this challenge to you, is people going through trials and challenges in life right now. Maybe you've got money challenges in the current situation we find ourselves in, in this country and around the world. Maybe you've lost a job or things are going wrong. 
Maybe you feel like God is showing you bitterness in your life. You're like Naomi at the end of chapter one. I went away full, but now I am empty. Maybe someone you love is not very well or struggling and you're feeling like you're in a dark and difficult place of trial and challenge. Well, if that's you, go to Christ. Go to the mother hen. This evening, draw near to him in prayer and say, Lord, may I feel your wings about me and over me. The comfort, the refuge and the security. May I experience those things by taking shelter under your wings. May I know the power of the Holy Spirit in my life as I draw close to you, Jesus Christ. Finally, I want to speak to you if you're a person who's in a very good season right now. Consider Boaz in this chapter. He owns a field. He employs workers. He could say, I don't need refuge from God. I have wealth. I have success. I have security. And yet instead, what does Boaz do in this chapter? He praises God and gives him glory. Do you know, there's a great temptation when things are going well, when things seem easy, to think, I don't need God's refuge anymore, to kind of lift up the wings of Christ and go, I'm going to do this in my own strength now. Things are in a good place. And, you know, even in this church, we've, we've known people who've come to us in a very dark and difficult situation, and we've seen them experience something of God's love in their life, and their life starts to turn around, and suddenly they find themselves, they, they get a job, they get a house, they, things start going well for them, and then as things seem to turn around and things go well for them, they start to go, well, God's not very important to me anymore. I don't need him anymore. I can go my own way. And we, it's so sad, but we've seen people who've come in the darkest of times and, and desperately needed God, but in the success and comfort, walked away and abandoned Christ. Can I say to you, do not make the same mistake in your life. In success, don't get proud. Keep seeking Christ for refuge. Keep enjoying the shadow of Christ's wings around you. Know that every good gift in your life is a gift from God. We've sung it, haven't we? He gives and he takes away. So whether you're in good times or whether you're in tough times, let's enjoy and worship Christ, enjoying the shadow of his wings. But that's what Ruth chapter 2 tells us, that God shows his glorious, <coughs> wonderful, full reward and favour to all who take shelter under the wings of Yahweh by faith in Jesus Christ. I'm going to invite the band up to lead us in a final song. I'm going to invite us all to stand and I want to lead us in prayer. Let's, let's pray together. Let's, let's spiritually come under the wings of Christ in prayer. Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, we love you and we love the message of Ruth chapter 2, that there is favour from you, that there is protection and refuge and love and power in your presence. And so we pray that all of us now would come into that place of taking refuge under the shadow of your wings. Lord, I want to pray for anyone who has ruled themselves out, who thought that salvation wasn't for them and that church or Christianity wasn't for them. Lord, I pray you would move in their hearts and that they would come to place their faith in Jesus and enter into the glories of salvation which we have received. Lord, I want to pray for anyone who's going through dark and difficult times right now, struggles, challenges, <coughs> trials, Lord. I thank you that in those times we can come to you and you pour out love into our hearts and souls and your presence is alongside us through all things. I pray that anyone going through challenges would know that, would know your love and refuge and protection. And Lord, I want to pray for anyone who's going through good times right now, who's been successful recently, Lord God. I pray against pride and against doing things in their own strength. But Lord, I pray they would always enjoy your presence and your refuge. They would keep coming back in thankfulness for the good gifts that they have received. And they would continue to take shelter under the wings of Christ every minute, every hour, every day. 
Lord, we thank you for your favour. We are nothing without you. We can do nothing without you. And yet in Christ, under the shadow of his wings, we are blessed with love, security, comfort, protection, power, and not just for today, but for eternity. And so we glorify you, Jesus Christ. We praise you and we come to take shelter under the shadow of your wings this morning because it's such a wonderful, wonderful place to be. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing together a song which is all about taking (coughs) refuge in Christ, uh, in Christ alone. We celebrate all these wonderful things we receive. Let's sing together. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground. Firm through the fuses, drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of pain. When fears are still, when striving see My comforter, my all in all. Here in the love of Christ I stand. stand in your power today, oh God. And just as we've looked at the life of Ruth this morning, Lord, we just pray to you, oh God, that you will help us wherever we are this morning to remember that you in Christ alone, our hope is found. Oh, we give you praise, Lord. Um, we're going to close our service now. Please, if you still want to be in that place where you want to pray or reflect on what you've heard this morning, please, I will implore you to just take a few minutes to, 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 to be in that presence. If you still want prayers, Duncan is available. I'm here as well. If you want to grab somebody else, that's absolutely fine. But let, let, let's pray for each other. Let's, let's encourage one another. 
Whatever, wherever you are this morning, those three stages that he, he spoke about, you know, f- grab somebody this morning and, and let them just encourage you and pray with you. Otherwise, we want a lot of conversation as well. So there's tea and coffee uh, at the back as well. So just grab some before you go and just talk to somebody you haven't spoken to before. And if this is your first time as well, we have Connect Card at the back as well. You would do well to g- grab one of these. We'd like to know more about you and hopefully pray with you before you go as well today. So do me a favor. Have a good week and God bless you all.